Food Heals Podcast, Episode 41. My dad was a lawyer and I used to argue every point he would make and he would be like, you need to be a lawyer because you're wrong, but you make a compelling case. (laughs) Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately. All right, welcome to the Food Heals Podcast. I'm Allison Melody. And I'm Susie Hardy. And today is Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Food Heals Nation. We're so excited to have you listening to us today. And we hope that you're enjoying some free time, hopefully with friends, with family, and just taking some time off. That's right. That's what it's for. That's what it's all about. We never, we don't do it enough of it, I think. As Americans, we're always driven, go, go, go. I mean, my whole day is what, how do I cross off everything on my to-do list? Exactly. (laughs) So today I'm not going to cross anything off except eat some good food and spend some time with friends and family and relax. Maybe get a little yoga meditation in. I just look forward to eating. (laughs) (laughs) That's as much, if I cook and eat, that's, that's all I need. And bake, then I'm happy. Yeah. So we'll just cook all day. We'll just relax. We'll just take it easy. So we have no sponsors today. We're just taking it easy with you guys. We really wanted to answer some of your questions. So we get a lot of emails. Thank you for your emails. And we try to answer every email. And if we haven't gotten to you yet, just trust me, we <laughs> you're on our list and we will. But we picked a couple of questions, two questions to answer today, because I feel like they're questions that a lot of people have. And, you know, they're questions that I've had and they're questions that I still have. So we want to make this really easy today and just talk about some of the things that you guys are talking about. So Susie, do you want to read our first question? Happy to. Hey there, Food Heals. Been listening to your podcast for a while now and enjoy it greatly. I have been healthy for some time and most of the things you talk about I already know from past research, but I still do learn from your interviews and conversations. I am writing because I actually downloaded your podcast in search of encouragement. Oddly, it becomes difficult to maintain this healthy way of eating when you're surrounded by people who find no interest in this way of life. Not only this, they put you down for it. I have a very close friend who believes that everything is genetically modified, non-GMOs do not exist, and that they do not affect someone's body. He will put me down for my thoughts on this matter and argue about my ideas and research I have found. Being a person who is bad at arguing, I usually give up and just ignore these things we don't have in common but it's beginning to become offensive. Food Heals, do friends and strangers put you down for your interest and ideas of health? And if so, how do you deal with it? Also, any tips for explaining GMOs and the like to my friend? Sincerely, Frustrated Sarah from Ohio. First of all, Sarah, yes, yes, yes. (laughs) I have been put down. I have been knocked down. I have been belittled for my beliefs. And you know what? It comes with the territory and you're never going to agree with everyone, whether it's religion, politics, food, doesn't matter, right? We're all different people. We're all learning from our own experiences, our own, you know, we take in all this information all day and we have to sit there and disseminate it from our experience. And it's hard sometimes because I feel so passionately about these things. Susie feels so passionately about these things. And obviously, Sarah, you feel so passionately about this. And it's great to have passion, but at the same time, it's not going to resonate. Your passion is not going to resonate with everyone. And you know what? You can't change everyone's mind is number one. And that sucks because as soon as- It does suck. (laughs) Because when you get educated and you learn something and you get passionate about it, it's like, oh, I have to tell the world, but the world doesn't always want to hear it. They don't. And I'm sure there's been times where it's happened to you and you've been on the other side. Like someone's trying to tell you something really passionately that they believe in and you're like, you know what? That doesn't resonate with me and I don't believe that. And that's okay. And everyone, just so you know, we have dogs in the studio. We have four dogs in the studio we have a today. Pack. We have a pack. We have a full-on pack. <laughs> yes. We've got Stevie, Charlotte, Obi, and Jackson tonight. So if you hear any dogs barking or if you hear their collars or they try to jump in our laughs, which Jackson is <laughs> <laughs> desperately trying to jump in Susie's laugh right now, we're just going to let that happen. So please don't be offended if you hear our dogs. But anyways, yeah, Sarah, we are frustrated too. This has definitely happened to us. And, you know, you're asking for advice. And my advice is just 
there's certain people in my life that I have realized that in order to continue the friendship, we can't talk about food. And that's okay, because we can talk about all the other things that we share in common. And we can celebrate that. But we got to stay away from certain topics with certain people. And you're not a failure if you don't change their mind. And you're not a failure if they continue to eat GMO laden food. And it's really hard. It's really hard. And let's talk about that a little bit because Sarah asked about GMOs. So GMOs stand for genetically modified organism. What does that mean? I have actually read things that say, well, anytime you selectively breed a plant with another plant, which has been going on for hundreds, if not thousands of, no, I'm going to say it, thousands of years, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you take a, a strain of one plant that is, has certain properties and cross it with another that has other properties in order to make... You know, and this is how our food sources actually changed. Corn used to be a lot smaller than than what we have now. You know, Allison, we've grown up with big, fat, yeah. long things of corn. Corn used to be three or four inches. Mm -hmm. And through selective breeding, through crossing different strains with others, trying to make it bigger, which we've done with all fruits and vegetables, as also making the outer membrane softer, like corn maize, with the, which is what the Aztecs used. And it used to be a lot tougher. So that's why they used, you know, stones to grind the corn, to make tortillas, to make any kind of food available to be broken down because it was very tough. Same thing with fruits and vegetables. The skins used to be a lot more tough. So we have selectively bred, genetically modified through just crossing certain strains with others different plants and fruits for centuries. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean now? When I think of GMOs, I'm thinking of... Monsanto. Monsanto. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not thinking about that. I'm not thinking about what they did hundreds of years ago. I'm thinking about what's been done specifically in the last 50 to 70 years. Yes. Where they're crossing, actually crossing different, different DNA of different plants. I've even heard with animal Products. DNA. Yes. In order to make them more resilient, more profitable for growth, and not taking into consideration our health. That's what I'm thinking of when I hear GMOs. And do we think that, you know, GMOs are in everything? They're in a lot of stuff. Let's face it. In America, they're in a lot of stuff. American government has let yes. companies like Monsanto, companies doing these these experiments basically in, in the name of profit and in the name of creating fake progress. fake progress food, not making progress in terms of health. They've allowed this to occur. And that's really what I think of when I hear GMOs. And do are they in absolutely everything? I don't think so. I think there's a lot. There's certain ones like uh, supposedly corn are have been genetically modified to an extent where you'd have to probably go outside the country. And the fact is because corn is what feeds our animals on the factory farms. And that's why. Yeah. And the other one is soy. Yeah. 90 or 95% of soy in the U.S. is genetically modified. So that's a scary statistic. So those are two that, you know, your friend may be referring to, like everything is genetically modified. Those two probably are. But there's a lot of foods that you can get from your local farmer's market that exactly. aren't. Exactly. Farmer's markets. You know, it's all about where does the seed come from? And if you can go get fresh seeds or the seed supply from somewhere else other than Monsanto, yeah. which chances are it's not been genetically modified other than what they did hundreds of years ago, naturally <laughs> breeding plants across each other. So frustrated Sarah from Ohio, I support you. I think that, yes, there are ways to find non-GMOs in most plants if you look. I totally agree. And I think that when you have someone in your life that is really um, a different stance than you are, and you know you can't argue with them because maybe you're not a great arguer or you're just not confident enough or they just destroy you every time and you don't want to deal with those feelings that that brings up because that's completely common. And people are great arguers even when they're wrong. So, <laughs> you know, like, my dad was a lawyer and I used to argue every point he would make and he would be like, you need to be a lawyer because you're wrong, but you make a compelling case. <laughs> <laughs> I would be like, here's my diatribe on why I must, my curfew must be moved to 1 a.m. rather than 12 p.m. And I would have notes. It was like a basic PowerPoint presentation before PowerPoint. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> anyway, so I understand that people are great arguers and you may not be able to combat that even if you feel so passionately about the topic you're speaking of. Well, here's the other point. Why would you want to? Yeah. You know, Sarah, are you making the choices that you are making for yourself or do you feel like you need to change the world? And We and all want to change the world, all, so we, all, we relate to we that. We all want to change the world, but sometimes with this kind of personality that 
we're gleaning from your email, sometimes it's best to surrender. Yeah. Sometimes it's best to go, you know what? I do what's right for me. You do what's right for you. And like Allison said, just choose not to talk about food. Because this kind of personality, this kind of person that wants to like put you down and make you feel bad and make you feel stupid, like you don't really know what I've seen. Well, you know what's right for you. Yeah. And you got to go with that. Yeah. And it's not really worth your time or your energy trying to argue with this person that probably will never change their mind anyway. Yeah. And for Susie and I, it's like, we just got a bad iTunes review and you guys can all read it. And it basically said that we were Valley girls and that we were promoting pseudoscience and things like that. And we just have to let that roll off our backs because we believe so passionately in what we are trying to educate people about. And if that doesn't resonate with everyone, that has to be okay. And, you know, they say you haven't made a difference in the world until someone disagrees with you. So if you're spreading something that you believe in and someone disagrees with you, you're doing something right. If everyone agrees with what you're saying, you're not doing enough. So good job, Sarah. Like, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you're doing a good thing. You know, the Valley Girl comment didn't bother me as much as if thinking about pseudoscience. And science is always changing. You think back to centuries ago where they didn't know about gravity. Oh, and then they discovered it, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I'm trying to fight my inner New Yorker and be like, oh, pseudoscience, but whatever. <laughs> I agree with you. I think that in order to actually make a difference, in order to stir up topics and bring up discussion, you do have to piss some people off. So yeah. thank you for that review. Yes. <laughs> I'm thank grateful. You. I feel gratitude for that review. And, you know, they were saying juice cleanses were bullshit and things like that. And they didn't use those words. I'm just saying it because I've heard that before. People have told me that. But we've had multiple doctors on who say that MDs, medical doctors, everyone, not to dodge anything else, but not, you know, natural doctors, but medical doctors who got their degree in Western medicine prescribing juice cleanses to their patients for a fixed amount of time in order to heal the body. And so that is a little bit of a vindication for Susie and I because this is what we've believed for so long and we've seen the healing results. We know people that have reversed really chronic diseases and sometimes supposedly so-called terminal diseases. And so for us, it's like we want to share the knowledge that we wish we had known when we had sick people in our lives. And Susie luckily grew up in an environment where they were like, you must eat your vitamins, but I didn't. I was raised raised from one of my earliest memories was when my mom handed me a cup of freshly pressed carrot and apple juice, which I did not like, and handed back to her promptly. And she said, no, you have to drink that. And I thought all people grew up like this. And then she moved on to vegetable juices for me. And, and I took supplements and ground up minerals put in yogurt and vitamin C liquid given to me on a teaspoon. I thought all people, that's how I grew up. I was given no choice. And I said, you take this. And guess what? I've been healthy pretty much most of my life. And was educated through my mother's efforts and my aunt's efforts to have us know about nutrition, which most people did not know. When my mom was pregnant with me, she asked the doctor, what should I be taking for my baby? And the doctor said, I think you know more than I do. Just do what you're doing. <laughs> That's what he told her. And she's like, okay, then I will. So to hear that, that juice cleanses are bullshit, it just, it kind of, it makes me laugh a little bit. And then I'm just kind of like shrugging my shoulders like, well, that person can believe whatever they want. They're clearly not going to get something out of our podcast. They've already made up their minds, even though I'm pretty damn sure they're not a scientist. They're not a nutritionist. They're just some someone that's probably like, no, I'm going to stick to my way of life. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to make it clear, Food Heals Nation, that the reviewer did not call juice cleanses bullshit, but I was using an example of what has been told to me in the past personally. And so I have had someone tell me that juice cleanses were bullshit. And this reviewer also did not believe in the juice cleanses. So I was making a comparison, but I never want to, I just want to make it clear that that person didn't say that. But anyways, I also want to add one more thing. Every body, every person's body is different in terms of genetics, biology, your past, your injuries, your proclivities, what you like, what you don't like. Sometimes people crave different things because their bodies need it. Every body is different. And that's what I think we try to honor on this podcast because healing with food and meditation and natural means is really means tapping into your body's own potential and what your body needs to do its thing. We're not trying to heal everybody of one thing through one vegetable. Yeah. It's really an individualistic approach. And I've had to do this many times in my life. I'm doing it with my dog right now with his yeah. diabetes. <laughs> I'm not try trying to heal every dog with diabetes. It's a very individualistic approach and everybody is different. 
So that's what we're trying to share here is options for your body for whatever you might need. I mean, it's so beautifully said, Susie. And it's like we were saying earlier, it's your personal experiences inform your beliefs. And so the way you grew up and what you're dealing with now and the clients that you have through massage therapy inform your beliefs. And for me, I grew up the opposite, just growing up what the doctor says is all you can do and there's no other options. Both my parents believe that. They were in that generation and it was drugs, 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 pills, pills, pills. They both died. So what is my experience? My experience is that doesn't work. And my experience is then meeting all these amazing people who have reversed disease, reversed cancer, reversed terminal diseases through diet, nutrition, alternative medicine, and so positive belief. Exactly. And so that's my experience. And so that's what I bring to the table. So your beliefs are informed by your life experience. And that probably doesn't change without major shifts and major thinking. So if you're talking to someone that grew up in an opposite environment, and maybe they went to medical school, or maybe they, you know, grew up in this very, very, whatever you grow up with is usually what you believe. And so it's really hard to change people's minds. And so for you, Sarah, just to bring this full circle, it's like, Don't feel like you can change everyone or you have to change everyone. It's not your responsibility. Just lead by example. Eat your non-GMO food, drink your green juice, and as you age and you stay healthy and other people get sick and then they go, well, what is Sarah doing that's different? You know, that's when you can make a difference. And if you can't make a difference right now, it's okay because someone else is going to listen and you're going to affect someone else's life. And if you help one person in your whole life, it's all It's all worth it, you know? And I want to give Sarah our blessing if she feels the need to actually not have to talk to this person anymore. I've, in my life, I have an analogy that I'm going to share with Food Heals Nation where I used to think that people that you meet along your life path, you're supposed to keep forever. And then as I grew older and had experiences, some would drift in and out, some would disappear. And I realized that relationships are like milk. They have an expiration date. Some are 60 years Some are your entire life. Some are two years. Some are three months. You never know what it's going to be. Sometimes relationships come into your life for a reason, and then the person needs to leave for a reason because you've learned what you need to learn from that person, whether it be a romantic relationship, a friendship, even a family member sometimes, unfortunately. Hopefully, you can always heal those if you want to. But sometimes you do need to let people go if they are being abusive, if they are not respectful. That is actually something I had to learn in my life where you have to set boundaries and say, no, this is how I choose to live my life. This is what I choose to believe. We don't have to agree, but if you're going to be disrespectful, you can walk out the door. And so that's okay too. You don't have to take abuse. You don't have to tolerate someone being disrespectful. I completely agree, Susie. I have cut people out as well. And If it's at that point, then it's going to be the healthiest choice you can make. If it's at a point where the friendship is still salvageable and you have other things in common, you really want to make it work, then make it work. If you don't, it's okay to let it go. And it's so empowering once you do, you're like, wow, that toxic energy is no longer, Mm -hmm. you know, grating at me anymore. Mm -hmm. You've moved on. And that's really, really empowering as well. So it's up to you. But we definitely can relate. It's happened to us both. We get it. Yes. We appreciate your question and we hope that it's helped others. We have another question that we want to get to on this beautiful Thanksgiving day. So, Susie, I'm a little sick. So we're going to ask Susie if she can read the next one. You sound much better, by the way. (laughs) Thank you. I feel like I'm losing my voice again. Okay. Question number two. First off, I love, love, love the podcast. And the first love has one, two, three, four, five O's. Thank so you. I love, love, love the podcast. <laughs> Thanks yes. for the five O's. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for providing all of the amazing knowledge and insight. At the end of the last podcast, I heard that you can make requests. My mom has suffered from fibromyalgia for a few years now and is stuck in her ways. I have tried to explain how important nutrition and alternative healing is to her pain management, but she is very stubborn and very is capitalized. If at any point you could fit in an episode on fibro, I would be forever grateful. I also do massage, and many of my clients also suffered with it, so I could apply the knowledge in many ways. Thank you again, Jamie. Jamie, first of all, thank you so much for your question, and I know so many people can relate to your story, whether they are suffering from fibromyalgia or whether they have a loved one suffering for it that doesn't understand the importance of nutrition, alternative healing, and also emotional healing. 
And so I don't feel that I'm the expert to answer your question, but I am definitely looking for people, whether it's a doctor, whether it's someone that's overcome this, please call in to the podcast, please email us. But Susie actually has a lot more experience with this. So I'm really going to let her answer this question. Thanks, Allie. So, you know, it's funny. I just worked on a client the other day for the second week in a row with fibromyalgia and she was in so much pain. And when I went to massage school, we were required to take a pathology course, which you learn about pretty much most disorders, diseases, and how to treat them with massage and how to approach them and any contraindications and, you know, the causes and so on. And from what I have learned, uh, so here are some facts that I know about fibromyalgia. Most people that get it, that are diagnosed with it, because it is a an autoimmune issue and is a complicated diagnosis. It, it, it's a complicated diagnosis. It's one of these where you have to have a certain amount out of X number of symptoms, pain, swelling, pain in the muscles, and so on. And if you don't, if, if you have, if you're supposed to have, say, eight out of 12 and you have seven out of 12, then they're not sure if you have it, but it could be a, a bunch of different things. It's one of those that's very, I would say, amorphous to Western medicine. It's, it's kind of a new diagnosis relative to other things. And most people that are diagnosed with it are women, and they're usually women that are older, the mothers, grandmothers in their 40s, 50s, 60s. From what I know of it, it seems to be a disorder that is highly linked to your emotional life. From what I know of it, it usually happens to women that have given of themselves so much to their husbands, their families, their children, their parents that they have left, they don't usually take very good care of themselves. Mm -hmm. Now that's a generalization, but that's what I've noticed. I've worked on many women. I've actually never met a man diagnosed with fibromyalgia. I've worked on many women, massaged many women with it. It's often characterized with a lot of pain in the muscles all over the body, aching. Fibro means fibrous tissue. Myo means muscle. And alga is inflammation of or pain, pain of, actually. So it's pain of the muscles and the fibrous tissues, the connective tissues, which is what massage addresses. I really feel for you, Jamie, because my mother, before she passed away, was on the verge of being diagnosed with fibromyalgia. She had a lot of muscle aches, body aches, unexplained. They didn't know where they were coming from, why they were happening, and really what to do with them. So from what I've learned with working with these patients, the best thing I can encourage you to do is not give up because there's more and more information every day about fibromyalgia. Like I said, it's very new. How your mom takes care of herself, I would think would have a huge impact on her aches and pains on her fibromyalgia. There's a lot of different things that she could try to ease her pain. This is probably, this might be a too big of a leap for your mother, but meditation would probably have a huge impact. You know, learning how to relax. This one client that I was working on the other day, even as I was massaging her, she was just holding her joints. Just hold, I would lift up her arm and she would just hold it. And I had to remind her, it's okay for me to help you. Let me help you. And that seems to be a pervasive thing with people, with women with fibromyalgia. It's yeah. like they're used to doing it all themselves. They give to their loved ones and they don't receive. They don't let other people help them. So even you as their massage therapist helping them, they don't want to let go of that control. They want to help themselves. They know they have all the answers. And so they're not allowing themselves to be healed even by a healer. Right. And in the moment, in a massage session, most people are able to let go. What would be even more challenging would be in an emotional way or um, a psychological way in their life to lean on other people to receive. I myself have a problem with receiving. I'm this kind of woman that's like, I can do it. I can do it myself. I think Allison kind of knows what I mean. Mm -hmm. A little <laughs> Where, bit, a little bit. <laughs> Where it's like, if I don't have to ask someone for help, I won't. I'll just do it myself. Yeah, even me if too. it means straining myself or taking on too much. And All right, girl, we got to work on that so we don't end up with fibromyalgia. I know. We are those type of women that are like, okay, we're going to get this all done ourselves. We are the super people. Like I was going to say super mom, but neither of us are mothers yet. But we are like the super achievers. Mm -hmm. We do everything that we can for our business, for our family, et cetera. And so, you know, it's kind of letting go of some of that. It's it's letting go and it's receiving and it's a give and a take. Okay, so I want to bring up – I'm actually going to read this to you guys – a parable – a story from the Confucian tradition. One night, Confucius dreamt that he was taken to visit the damned in hell. 
He was very surprised to see that hell was a beautiful banqueting room, with the damned sitting around the table, groaning under the weight of the most delicious food he had ever seen. They were allowed to eat anything they liked, but they had to use chopsticks, and the chopsticks were five foot long. The damned were starving, staring in agony at the uneaten food before them, knowing that even with all eternity in which to solve the problem, it could not be done. And then Confucius is taken to heaven. And heaven is an identical banqueting hall, full of delicious food. The people around the tables are happy and well-fed, but they too must obey the same rule. The food can only be eaten with chopsticks that are five foot long. Only in heaven, they're feeding each other. So that, I've heard that in a variety of ways. I don't know if that started with Confucius or where that exactly started, but yeah, I've heard we, it with spoons or forks or chopsticks, whatever, what have you. We talked about it on another podcast where basically if the three of us were sitting here, we're all holding a spoon very long and we're feeding each other. We're not feeding ourselves, right? Right. And that is what I feel like sometimes people with fibromyalgia need to learn that they don't need to feed themselves. They need to put down their own spoon and be able to receive, let someone else help and feed. And it it is, for me, it's who's pretty much self-reliant. It's a little bit of a challenge. It's a little bit of letting go of the ego. It's a little bit of, tr- it's a lot of trust, but it's very important. I think it's especially important for people that have come down with fibromyalgia. It's like ask for help, receive a massage, let go of trying to fix it yourself or having all the answers and opening up to possibility and trust. And that would be what I know about fibromyalgia and what might help Jamie and her mom. And, you know, this is not going to happen overnight. So this is a process. All life is a process. And so this is something that can take time because letting go of the beliefs that we hold core, that we hold dear, takes a lot of time and energy. It's not like a smoker who just quits cold turkey, right? It's not really possible because you're changing the way that you think about things, about the world, about life, about your contributions to the world. And so know that this may take time and that's okay and be okay with that. And I want to speak to a little bit about the nutritional element Though this is not my area, so I still encourage, please call us if you are a doctor who deals with fibromyalgia, or if you are a patient who has healed this, please call us, email us your story, and we will have you on. But I think this is really important for anyone with autoimmune. Number one thing to cut out of your diet is anything that causes inflammation. What causes inflammation? The number one is dairy. There's many things that cause inflammation, but number one is dairy. So what inflammation is, is like the number one cause of disease. So when you have fibromyalgia, when you have multiple sclerosis, when you have all these diseases, it's an inflammation in your joints and your body. And it may not be a concept that you understand right now, but get educated about that and realize what foods are you eating that cause inflammation? Because if you're eating a dairy-centric diet, no matter what, you are causing inflammation in your body. And that's an easy thing to reverse. That's not something you reverse with a pill. Yeah, you can take anti-inflammatories, but hey, what's the point of that? Those have side effects. Just stop eating dairy. There's so many great alternatives. There's almond milk, there's hemp milk, there's rice milk, you know, all these cheeses and all these things can be replaced. Like you're not going to suffer. You're going to eat delicious meals still, like no worries. But look at your diet, take out anything that is inflammatory because that is going to reduce some symptoms. Not saying it's the only cause or the only way to reverse it, but it's definitely going to help. And then look at the emotions, just like Susie's talking about. I want to bring up one resource that is recommended by Louise Hay. If you don't know who Louise Hay is, look her up. She is my go-to guru for anything medically related And she gives like the most holistic approach. And what she recommends for fibromyalgia is also recommended for back pain, chronic back pain. And there's a book by John E. Sarno. He's a medical doctor, MD, and it's called Healing Back Pain, The Mind-Body Connection. And you can get it on Amazon, you can get it on Kindle, Audible, it's all over the place. So check that out, definitely. And again, If you have a story to share, if you've been through this, if you've healed it, or if you are a doctor, call us, email us, 
info at foodhealsnation.com. And we want to do an entire episode about this, but we wanted to make sure that we got Jamie's question answered because we feel really, really passionately when we get your emails, we want to get them answered. So know that if you get an email from us and you haven't heard back, we are working on the answer, whether Susie and I are going to answer it, whether we're going to bring an expert in or whether we're going to do a combination of both, right? Mm -hmm. So right now we're doing our best to answer your question. And then we are also trying to bring in an expert on this. We want to help everyone get the information they need to heal. Absolutely. And I have one last bit of advice for Jamie, if I may add to what we've already said is, Jamie, what's also might be helpful for you is to let go of any attachment about how your mom receives this information because you said she's very stubborn and stuck in her ways and maybe not want to listen to what you might have to bring her in terms of advice or diet changes, et cetera. And all you can do is love her. I mean, let's face it, we all love our moms and and that's why you're you're reaching out to us because you love your mom and you don't want to see her suffer anymore. And sometimes people have their own path to follow yeah. as hard as that is to accept. And all you can do is bring her suggestions possible changes and then just let go of however she's going to receive them because she may not accept them or yeah. she might. She might accept some of them. She might eventually get interested, but either way, you can't control anybody else. Yeah. And she said her mom is stubborn. So <laughs> we know what that means. Don't worry. My dad was so stubborn and I used to sit there and I would pray and I would write down affirmations about how I was going to change him and I would tell him things and he wasn't able to receive the information that I was giving. It was like a like a bounce back. Like I would send it and he would bounce it back and tell me why it wasn't. And he wasn't able to receive the information. He was stubborn. He was set in his ways. And sometimes it's going to be about accepting the choice of the loved one to do what they want to do and turning their back on the healing possibilities and not knowing it, just being like, this is my life. This is what I want to do. And this is how I'm going to do it. And sometimes it's more of a lesson for us going, we can't change people. We can't heal people. We can only change ourselves. We can only heal ourselves. And I wouldn't be able to say this if I hadn't been through it. And I think I used to be a strong believer, like this knowledge can change everyone. Like I have all the answers. And the truth is we can only change ourselves, live by example, do the best that we can and be that loving essence. Just like Susie said, just give her all your love and that might be all you can do and being okay with that and finding comfort in that. You know, my dad was never going to change and I had to accept that. And he sat me down. He told me, I'm not doing this juice bullshit. Okay. (laughs) No, he wanted to smoke his cigars and drink his alcohol until the day he died. And there wasn't nothing that little blonde Allie was going to do about that. And you guys, please trust me. I tried so hard. I tried so hard. And accepting that I couldn't change him, change his habits or change his beliefs is one of the hardest lessons I've ever learned in my life. But guess what? I learned it. And now I think twice when I try to change my husband or my friends or whatever, I don't because I know like all I can do is lead by example and that's all you can do. Mm -hmm. So that's how I want to leave this. Again, if anyone out there wants to talk about fibromyalgia that really has a healing story or a doctor's opinion, let us know. Info at foodhealsnation.com. And it's Thanksgiving. So Susie, what are you thankful for this year? I'm thankful for you and this podcast because I never really thought that I would be doing something like this. Even though about a year ago when I started listening to podcasts, I'm like, those are really cool. And I've done voiceovers and God, that's really, yeah, those are, they're really cool. And I love listening to them. Um, So I'm thankful for this past year and creating this with you. I'm thankful for my husband and my doggy and my family and thankful for good things to come. That is so awesome. And I swear, you guys, Food Heals Nation, I did not pay her to say that. Okay. No, she did not. <laughs> I didn't know she was going to go there. But oh my God, I'm so grateful I met you. I'm so grateful we're doing this podcast. I feel like this has become such a platform for us to share our knowledge and the knowledge of our guests. And I'm just so grateful for all the listeners that are emailing us and tweeting us and Facebooking us. Like, thank you. We are so grateful that you are listening. And 
you know, in my personal life, I'm grateful that I I got married a year ago and Woo-hoo! I'm building this partnership with my husband and we're building our dream jobs together. Like he's working on his writing and producing and I'm working on this podcast and some other things. And I'm just grateful for the time period that we're in, that we have so much access to information that I didn't have before. Like when my parents were sick, I always harp on this and I'm so sorry, Food Heals Nation, but man, the information at your fingertips now, today, is unlike anything in history. And if you want to learn something, you can learn it. If you want to heal something, you can heal it. There are endless possibilities for me, for Susie, for our doggies in the studio, for everyone listening. Like, just be grateful that we have so much opportunity every day of our lives. So, Amen to that. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben and Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately.